you are not going to want to miss today. As a matter of fact, we have royalty today. We have watercolor royalty, the greatest, considered to be the greatest watercolor master in the world. How's that make you feel, Joe? Uh, a bit silly, actually. <laughs> well, look, I, I never think of that. You know, I just paint. That's my simple philosophy to painting that I've had for about 40 years. As soon as you let anything like that enter that space, you end up getting a big head and your paintings start failing. So I just stay pure. Well, at least you have the chair, the royalty chair. That's right. Yes, yes. Look, I've been collecting antiques. Uh, you'll see some in a minute when I show you the studio since I was 15. My father nearly killed me. I swapped my bed for a couch. So I had to sleep on a couch for about five years before we came to Australia. But the couch sold for more than all the furniture in our house. So there you are. I, wow. I was good. So you have good taste. Oh, I don't know. I, I just love lovely things. You know, it's yeah. just, I can't resist them. But I've now made myself stop. I've actually de-junked here. I, I, it was so crowded I couldn't move. So I'm now, I guess, just enjoying the, the, the good pieces that I've got. So, Joseph, uh, what are you going to do for us today? Look, I have a surprise for you. So oh, you do? Because if I tell you what it is, it won't be a surprise. But the demo is going to be completely different to what people are used to. Only some people have seen it. They've seen it in my classes, like, of course, in Europe or wherever else. Um, I, it's never been uh, on DVDs or YouTube or anywhere else. So it, I'll leave that as a surprise. All right. And I intend to show you around the studio. It's an interesting space. I think you'll really enjoy that. Exciting. Okay. We're going to drop off for just a second. I'll make a couple of announcements and then we'll have you back. All right. uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to the big surprise. All right. Our guest today is Joseph Zabukvich, who, who I believe is the premier watercolorist in the world. And I think everybody else would agree with that. It's just, there's a lot of good ones, but nobody lives up to that. And uh, we're excited to have him and he's going to have a surprise. Today is day number 216. I have up till about day 213, I did 213 days in a row, nonstop, uninterrupted. Now I'm taking weekends off, but we're here to keep your head in the game, help you stay positive, keep it, keep you thinking about artwork and art and things that are fun so that you're not letting all the other things like COVID and quarantines and elections and, and disrest and everything else uh, mess with your head. You've got to keep your head in the game. You've got to stay positive. And so that's why I'm doing this every day. So I am on every day. For those of you who might be brand new discovering this, uh, my name is Eric Rhodes. I'm the publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plen Air Magazine in America. Uh, Plen Air Magazine is the number one selling art magazine in America. It is uh, number one in Barnes & Noble nationally, which is the, uh, the big chain here. Uh, number one selling art magazine in America, and also now just entered to uh, 278 Michael's store. So we're very, very proud of that. So anyway, essentially, I'm here every day at 12 noon. Uh, I'm live on Facebook on my personal account, Eric Rhodes, uh, or on Facebook at Streamline Art Video and YouTube at Streamline Art Video every day at 12 noon. And then every day at 3 p.m., we're offering you samples of many of the hundreds of videos that we've produced. We've literally, literally reached millions of people since we started doing this. We're pretty excited. Uh, one of the best things you can do is to go onto YouTube, search Streamline Art Video and subscribe. That way you will have access to the entire library of every video we've done for the past 216 days. Some of it is art marketing and art business. Some of it is interviews with great artists. Some of it is de demos and uh, interviews with uh, art dealers, art collectors. It's been quite uh, quite a mishmash. And so you want to go to YouTube and search Streamline Art Video and then hit subscribe. And then you can have access to all of it. And of course, we're, we're here daily. Also want to tell you that we publish a publication called American Watercolor. It is a weekly online publication edited by Kelly Kane, who is the former editor of Watercolor Magazine. She's now the also the editor of Plein Air Magazine. You probably know her from the past, and you can subscribe for free. All you do is go to AmericanWatercolor.net, not .com, but .net, and put a slash forward slash subscribe, and that way you can get it. 
And uh, we got tens of thousands of people who are getting it every week and you're learning about watercolor and about the trends and what's happening out there. So that's a, a really terrific thing for you to do. And we of course would be honored if you do it. I think the big thing that I wanna tell you about though is that uh, we are doing an event called Watercolor Live. We started doing virtual events. We've done uh, live in-person events for many years and we were not able to do them this year. And we always at the plein air convention always had a watercolor stage. As a matter of fact, Joseph Bookvich has been on that stage along with many others. And, uh, but he always was on the main stage because he's the big guy. Anyway, uh, we are doing a virtual online conference in late January called Watercolor Live. And we have some of the biggest and best and most important watercolor artists in the world on that. And uh, I'll just want to go through it and show you the names. These are in alphabetical order, I think. So uh, not, not by uh, priority. Linda Daly Baker, uh, Agnes McEwen, Michael Holter, Kim, I, I'm going to get it wrong. I know it's uh, Kim Minicalo. I, I finally got it right. Kim Minicalo, uh, Brenda Swinson, Jean Peterson, John Salminian, uh, of course, Joseph Zabukvich, who we're talking to today, Keiko Tanabe, Lauren McCracken, Mario Robinson, Matthew Bird, Pablo Rubin, Suni Warren, Stephen Zhang, Thomas W. Schaller, Andy Evenson, and Dan Marshall. And of course, many more to be announced. And that is the 28th through the 30th. Block it out on your calendar. You're going to want to attend this. And beginner day is on the 27th. We go through beginner essentials first. Uh, that's an optional thing that you can sign up for, or you can sign up for the three days of Watercolor Live. It's going to be uh, world class, and you don't want to miss it. We just came off of uh, Realism Live last week, and we had a lot of fun. We had dancers in the studio. We had uh, thousands of people on uh, Zoom calls, and we would go into smaller breakout rooms, get to know each other. We would have uh, people, uh, we would have painting together at night from a live model, and uh, people were painting the live model on Zoom. Uh, we had some fabulous instructors, including Dean Mitchell, uh, Juliet Aristides, uh, Rose Franson, um, Stephen Bowman, uh, Connor Walton, um, this is Mark D'Alessio and many, many others. And so uh, that's pretty cool. The other thing this week uh, during that event and online, we had our artist and selfie competition. I want to go through so you can see the winners again real quickly. A People's Choice Award went to Sibylline. Uh, the best selfie artist was Jen Brown. The uh, historic best painting of a historic artist was Gabriela Gonzalez Deloso. The best painting of a living artist was William Size. Uh, the best painting of an artist painting in plein air was Joe Wang. Uh, the, uh, let's see, the best artist studio, we wanted to document artist studios as well, Alessandra Mercucci from Italy. Uh, the no number two prize, second prize, went to Crystal Brown, depicting another artist, and the winner was Ernest Wood, who will be on the cover of Fine Art Connoisseur magazine. So we're pretty pretty thrilled about that. It's been a, a great time. I want to also tell you real quickly that I do a blog called Sunday Coffee, and it is now up to about a quarter million readers, and it's uh, just life philosophy. It's not always to do with art, but uh, this week is especially important, and I would encourage you to read it. You can go there and read it, or you can subscribe for free, coffeewitheric.com coffeewitheric.com. Also, uh, we have a prize winner this week. Let's see who are uh, this week. Today, our prize winner, uh, we gave away a pair of value specs for today, and the winner is C.J. Clark of Raleigh, North Carolina. Congratulations. Bravo to C.J. Clark. Uh, tomorrow, you can win a digital subscription to Plen Air Magazine, a whole year subscription, and uh, you do that by making comments we would like for you to say where you're from. And if you're watching for the first time, say, I'm a first timer and say where you're from. And we are going to randomly gra grab comments and then we will award a digital subscription to Plein Air Magazine to someone. It's a fabulous magazine, if I might say so myself. And uh, the digital subscription to the magazine works well for people outside of the U.S., 
but everybody in the U.S. gets pretty much gets both. They subscribe to the print magazine and the digital because the digital has 20% more content, lots more pages that we can't get into the print. So uh, that's what we're going to be giving away. So now, uh, oh, I should mention two other things. We have a, a massive Plenty Air Convention that is supposed to take place in May. We'll see. Fingers crossed. That'll be in Denver, and it's a live event, and we paint outdoors, but we also have indoor sessions. So we'll see. Fingers crossed we're going to be able to hold that. Also, I'm taking a group of 48 artists to Russia. Uh, we have 50 seats total, and I've got my organizers and so on that take up four of those seats, myself included. But uh, 48 of us get to go to Russia and paint for two weeks, and we're going to paint in the small villages. We're going to paint in the cities of St. Petersburg and in the city of Moscow, but mostly the small villages. We're also going to be doing some touring because you can't be there and not, uh, not experience those things. Now, this week, uh, before the end of the month, you want to sign up for the Plein Air Salon uh, competition. Uh, we just awarded the competition a couple of weeks ago to Dave Santiani's. We should have his picture on here. But this is uh, showing Tom Hughes was last year's winner. And uh, every month we give away prizes. And it's not all plein air. We have studio works, landscape works, uh, still life uh, figure, et cetera. And so there's 20 categories. And you can enter pleinairsalon.com. You want to make sure. And they don't have to be fresh paintings. We don't care if they're older or new. Uh, we care that they're great paintings. Last but not least, uh, there's a great book. Uh, it's called Make More Money Selling Your Art, Proven Techniques for Turning Your Passion into Profit. And it is the book that people are buying to be able to uh, really understand how to market and sell their art. I do a lot of courses. I teach marketing for artists at our events, uh, but I also have written this book to give you kind of a head start and get you started you can find it anywhere at artmarketing.com slash book, or you can get it on Amazon, of course. And it was an Amazon bestseller the first week it came out. So we're pretty happy about that. Now we're going to get to our guest artist, uh, the great uh, watercolor master, Joseph Zabukvich. All right, Joseph, yeah, I'm going to put you on full screen and I'm going to hop off and I'll talk to you, but I'm going to let you take over. Thanks, Eric. Great to see you again, by the way. I really enjoyed my stay in San Francisco. Well, as I said before, before I do a demonstration for you, I want to show you around the studio. And my beautiful assistant is holding the camera, Lisa. So she'll follow me around. That will take about 10 minutes or so. All right. I love that old record player. Uh, that, that looks pretty cool. Yes, it actually still works. Not very well, but it works. Oh, well, that's uh, very excellent. Like the looks of it. It's, it's uh, a fantastic looking thing. Oh, it's beautiful. It's uh, Art Deco, obviously. Uh, a lovely thing. As I said before, I love collecting beautiful things. That's why I've got Lisa with me. All right. So this is the front room of the studio. Lisa will just pan it around for a little bit while I talk. Um, and, and you're in Melbourne, Australia. It looks like yes, you're in an old is. warehouse or something. It's in Fitzroy, which is a first out-of-city suburb in Melbourne. It, it, most of the buildings date to about late 1800s. This is an old uh, substation, electrical substation. So it's a small warehouse. It provided electricity for Fitzroy. It went out of use in about 50s, and it's been in private hands since. I think I'm only a third owner. I, I saw it looked like a motorized bicycle or a motorcycle over there. What was that it all about? Is, uh, the last time I rode that, it cost me $950 in a fine. It's apparently illegal, which is a bit uh, sad. But there you are. The bureaucracy has gone crazy. There's people zooming around on electric bikes doing 70k an hour. This thing barely moves. But because it's got a motor on it, I got booked by the policeman. So now it's there for display. <laughs> So this is a front room. Uh, it's a little bit of a leftover because this used to be my studio space where I used to paint, but the street became too noisy. You probably just heard a car go past. Right. I had a cafe next door, so it uh, started to create a lot of noise. So I've moved at the back, as you will see in a minute. So this is a kind of a temporary arrangement. This is going to be a gallery come teaching space eventually. This is one of Lisa's works here, this giant piece. It's oh, a, it's beautiful. It's, it's a football. I guess she's a brilliant painter. She's better than me. If you look at that football, you can... I, I, Lisa, turn the cab, camera around so we can meet you real quickly. Okay. 
There she is. Hi, Hi Lisa. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you. I love your hair. Oh, thank you. It's Lisa's blue. <laughs> yes, it is Lisa's blue. Yes. But uh, so, there you are. This is a. Uh, she's uh, getting better than I am. I have to watch myself. She's actually a great uh, a spur on for me, so I have to paint a bit better. So this is uh, one of my little pieces here. Oh yes, I forgot to mention. Ready to go here is my outdoor uh, painting gear. That's a little trolley that I made up. I put the easel on that and a folio and uh, a water bottle is the brass thing there. So I quite often go painting just locally. And you know, it's important to keep it ready because if you, if you have if you have to put everything together and find something that needs to go in the kit, you'll never end up going. Oh, it's a pain. And I used to leave things behind once I, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, once I left my pallet at home, I forgot to take it. So I ended up taking a hubcap off the car and using it as a pallet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm a bit, bit of a handyman, as you'll see in a minute. So I make these things up as I'm, like, best as I can. This is one of my little landscape paintings here, just temporarily up. I don't have many paintings in the studio that are framed. Mainly they're unframed and they go off to galleries and so forth uh, before they're framed. That's lovely. Um, here is a little office corner of sorts where I do my tax. I hate doing that. I'd, I'd give them all of my money if they just left me alone. I hate it. I don't know how you are. You probably employ someone to do it. I have to do it myself. And this is one of my paintings uh, of horses up there when Lisa gets around to it. And uh, it's one of my favorite subjects. Unfortunately, it doesn't find that many buyers. It's a kind of a rare thing that not many people get to see. In horse racing, they go training early in the morning, pre-dawn. And that pictures that, you know, the first light of the morning. That's lovely. And I absolutely love it. And I love going there and doing it. And if I could paint just that, I would be happy. There's nothing more spectacular that you can see than the horse's breath and, and the steam coming from their bodies first thing in the morning. It's just spectacular. So this is a little framing corner here that Lisa does. I'm not a framer myself. She does a lovely job of that. So that will be part of this uh, room when it happens. And a few leftover collections of my antiques and things. Bits and what, things. Are, what? I'm just curious what these things are. What is that green? Is that a frame? That's framing? a framing uh, guillotine. guillotine. You press this down and it uh, cuts the molding. Uh, it does. It, oh, I need one of those. That's pretty cool. Yes, yes. They're not cheap, but they're, no. they're, they're not. It's not that easy to use. You know, you could lose some fingers. That blade there. Tell you, I, I don't want to oh, get near you. Here, put your finger in there and let's see what happens. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. <Yeah. laughs> All right, so we're going to move on to the uh, rest of the building. This is just the front room. And there's Gigi That's Cine. really it's very charming. Yes, it's a lovely space. The building has a certain quality to it that you can't get with new buildings, I think. There's always yes. that I want to show you something that you have seen before next. All right. I'll get Lisa to do this. Now, this is a toilet. You have never seen a toilet like this in your life. All right. And she will zoom in on something you've seen before. Yes. Oh, hey, look at that. That's nice. So I, I, feel, I feel I'm honored sorry. to be in your bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> But there's also the award underneath of my uh, first China award, which launched me into a Chinese uh, market, which I, I am huge there. Uh, it's a, an amazing thing. I'm mobbed when I go there. I just thought I didn't know what to do with all these walls. So I got all these diplomas and awards and things. So I thought I'd put them up just for a bit of fun. Well, and I think it's a good idea to put them in a place like that. It keeps you humble, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, indeed. I look, it used to be full of junk. Uh, you could not move in there, so I've actually cleaned it up. So it now looks very tidy compared to what it used to be like. So that's it there. So if you go to Lou here, you've got plenty of reading matter. And um, this is the kitchen, which I no longer use. I used to live here. I don't live here anymore. Lisa and I have moved out and live uh, in North Melbourne, which is about a 10-minute bike ride from here. 
I can talk to you about this uh, print up here, which is of the painting that won a $20,000 award at Campbell Rotary Art Show, which is the biggest show in Australia. At, uh, the first prize, as I said, is 20000 And it's the first watercolour that ever won it. And it was in 2001. So it's showing my age. Um, <clears throat> it's was given to me as, uh, afterwards and I had a show uh, at a gallery which is now closed, sadly, in the city. So that was promoting the exhibition. The kitchen is now just used to make coffee and a bit of lunch or something like that. All right. Well, it's, uh, nice, to have, it's nice to have it in case Lisa throws you out. Yes, indeed. It's a backup. It's a backup. Uh, I've got a fold-up bed somewhere as well. Um, few black and white photos of myself when I was young and handsome. Now I'm just old and handsome, I'm afraid, but that's all right. And there's also my daughters there when they were much smaller. Uh, this was done by a professional photographer who, I, he stopped me. I was in a car in my little sports car one day and he loved the looks of it. So that's how it started. They're beautiful. Now we go to the real thing that people will be interested in more than the, the rest of it. And that is, uh, Sorry, I, I marched ahead. Uh, this has actually now become my studio. It used to be my living space. There was a bed where the workbench is now, but it's gone. And this has now become my studio. It's a much quieter and much more private um, space than the front room was. And as I said, I'm a bit of a handyman. So first thing I did was I built myself a little uh, workbench. So I built this myself from an old... Um, chest of drawers, uh, um, um, I think they're called map drawers. I have some tools there to remind me of my dad who, who taught me to make things with my hands. So these are all some of the tools he used, those drills and things himself. Oh, they're beautiful. And they're kind yeah. of a nice memory. They got a lot of character. Well, that, and for me, there's a personal memory there as well. So, And I... Look, honestly, if I wasn't an artist, I'd be a carpenter or a handyman or something. So I thought maybe uh, at this stage I could show you. I keep all my papers in here, sketches and things. And I have a few paintings here. I'll go through them. Not too many. I, I, you'll get sick of it. And Lisa will just, uh, I'll just put them out one at a time. I won't talk about them too much. Uh, this is, uh, I've been returning to some old subjects lately. You know, I've been at this for 40 plus years. It's very right. hard to find new subjects. So you kind of go back and look with fresh eyes at something you used to do. I did these about 30 years ago, 40 years ago. So I've come back to them with a, a kind of a new eye. Um, something I did just the other day after we were allowed to travel further than three miles from studio. Um, but you're, you're, you're not allowed to go within three miles of your house. Is that the deal? Until today, yes, uh, we finally, the last week, we were allowed to go 25 kilometers. Before that was five, which is about three miles, which was just far enough to get from my uh, apartment to the studio. That's it. Um, some baristas uh, making coffee, which is a, a huge thing in, in Australia. We, we make the best coffee in the world, that's for sure. A little sketch of a cafe I visit regularly on the way to the studio which is now finally reopened. Um, a nice Aussie landscape. This is a classic Australian view. Um, Australia is still a fairly young country, so there's still a lot of trees left and a lot of natural landscape. It hasn't been sculptured like, let's say, in Europe. Everything is manicured, you know what I mean? You know, I've never been to Australia, but I need to come visit. You really should. I think, honestly, I have traveled the world. It is a fabulous place. It is so relaxing, so nice, so beautiful to paint, so friendly. Uh, you, you won't go wrong. You won't regret it. It's a wonderful place. Well, you know, if, 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 uh, if things go well, I'm, I'm invited to an event in China in November, a couple of plein air events. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, if I'm going to be allowed to, but if so, I'll just kind of tag that on to the uh, the end of the trip. It'll be the closest I've been. All right. Well, you could try that. But I think our borders are still closed and stuff. It's very, very difficult to travel overseas. Um, 
we have basically an island, so we have closed ourselves up. We're down to just a few cases, zero actually in our state at the moment. So we are very keen to keep it that way. Yeah, absolutely. I mentioned, uh, I mentioned uh, going out painting uh, locally with that little trolley and my gear. This is just uh, two streets away around the corner. Especially in the evening, light, light of the day, I, I will just grab the trolley and my gear and go out. And uh, rather than starting the beer clock early, I, I'll just go out and do a quick one like this. That's so beautiful. That. Yeah, Love the yeah. sunlight. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that last light is always so beautiful. And, of course, I mentioned the horses before. Wow. I, if I missed anything uh, from this lockdown, it's been going to horse racing. I absolutely adore it. They're just magnificent animals, and there's always subjects. And I, I just love doing it. I start these on location just more or less from memory. I take some photos, and then I go home and finish them off. But the movement and the feel of it I get on the location itself. So you're doing a painting or a sketch? Oh, I would call that somewhere halfway in between. I, I, yeah. I think that's past the sketch, but it, I wouldn't call it a finished painting. Yeah, but you're, not, but you're actually painting on watercolor paper. You're not just using a sketchbook. You're actually making... No, no, no. I, I use... This is actually colored paper, so that avoids having to do a background. And by putting in a highlight there, you can, you can get a, a three-dimensional feel very quickly. Ah, so it's, it's just a slightly gray, I think it's just print paper or something like that. It, it's not proper watercolor paper. Uh, this is another one of uh, local scene just around the corner. Honestly, it's 100 yards from, from this studio. It's a corner uh, in the rain. Uh, one of those popular subjects that everyone seems to enjoy. This is uh, another one of Williamstown, uh, particularly like this one. It uh, really came up. And this was started on location, but I did finish this in a studio. Uh, it, it was just too complicated to finish there. The form uh, in those boats is just uh, absolutely amazing. That's very difficult to accomplish. Look, you know, creating an illusion of lots of uh, detail is... I don't think it's a trick, but it's something that after a while you, you realize what's needed and what you should leave out and what you should put in. Putting too much in actually makes it less detailed. It's a, it's a hard thing to explain. You just indicate little bits and pieces and you swear that there's all this rigging and stuff, but it's not. It's just some terrible lines. So anyone who knows about yachts will know that this rigging is completely wrong. I put it there so it looks good. <laughs> I had a Jewish, uh, little Jewish man in my class once, and he went crazy when I did a painting of uh, a yacht, and he took the brush out of my hand and tried to paint the rigging himself. It was so hilarious. And I'll just show you one more, which is my classic uh, street scene that everyone knows these cars and things. You can see them um, emulated around the place. Is that Melbourne? That's this is Bendigo, but there's town halls like this in every city, and Bendigo's got uh, one, and Melbourne has a number of them, one in each suburb. Uh, they were built in the late 1800s uh, as, you know, symbols of prosperity and so forth. Right. They're just beautiful. Um, beautiful old buildings, just gorgeous, and I'm particularly happy with this one. There's more work here, but I won't bore you any longer. I think that's that will do. We'll have a look around this uh, studio quickly, and then I'll do the surprise. Oh, so good. Yes. Well, pretty exciting. Yeah, that's going to be good. Well, we've got about 25 minutes left. All right. Well, I better get on with it then. This is uh, used to be just my living uh, area, where, but now I can just relax when I finish the day, or I welcome clients and show them paintings, or I can have a drink at the end of the day. I'll leave it fine. It's actually quite uh, cold today. There's a few of my old works up there, and that's it. A beautiful stained door there, looking just on the back line with rubbish bins, but I, I still, you know, feel that there's a, an outside. Some boomerangs for you there. These are the real thing. These are not the tourist, you know, right. uh, plywood things. These are the real thing. Now, there's this big myth about 
boomerangs coming back. They're not meant to come back. Only the ones for kids and the ones that are meant, they're small, that they try and kill birds with up in the trees, they'll come back. The boomerang that's supposed to harm a kangaroo or a wallaby or another animal, they don't come back. You, you just throw them and um, disable the animal and then they finish it off with a stick, a big stick on the bottom. You learn something new every day. It looks like you've got an old woodworker's bench as your, as your, for your studio. It is indeed. Uh, and as I said before, if I was uh, not an artist, I would have been a carpenter. I just found it in an antique shop. I could not resist it. It had this beautiful back with all these little things on it. I befriended the guy that owns the shop and swapped the painting and some cash for it. So we better get on with uh, uh, doing the demo because uh, we are running short of time. So I'll just quickly go through my equipment a little bit because I know people are very interested in that. They are. I, uh, this is a new thing, these brushes. They're Skoda. Uh, at least so we can't see them. Yeah, there we go. They're called, called a gold line. They have a gold uh, ferrule there, yeah. as you can see. They are just a bit longer and even pointier than before. I will promote them as time goes. I have been with the Skoda for about 30 years. And, I've and this, so this has got your name on them? Yes, it does. It's hard to see, but it's right there. It's got the famous Z on it. Uh, of course, I use uh, Daniel Smith watercolors, and I have uh, my little water buckets that I've collected and a collection of sprays and things. That one over there, you could put a fire out with. I found that in an antique shop. When you pump it up, it sprays water about 10 meters. So it's, <laughs> it's not really useful for watercolor, but it looks, no, but it looks nice on the desk. Look, I, I think having a, a nice space like this, to me, it's very important. I see some artists that work in all sorts of spaces. I find that I need that nice environment. It makes me feel good and I'm comfortable and it just gives me a bit of a spur to work properly. I think so too. I, I think, uh, you know, in my particular case, I like antiques and, and interesting objects. So I think I would yeah. love your place and uh, it just, it, it makes you feel more inspired when, when you're in that kind of an environment. It does. You know, who wants to go to some dingy room and, you know, with no lights or anything? I, I, I just think this is a, a, a lovely space. And all these things are selected myself. They all have a story. Every single thing you look at, you know, uh, here. This is from the top of a lamp. It's a little cowboy on top of a horse. I picked up in San Francisco, actually, believe it or not, in a tea shop. Um, they gave it to me. I bought some other antiques and they gave me that as a little, they said, oh, you can have that. So there's a story just to that. So every single thing you look at, there's a story behind it. So that's about it. Um, All right. Um, the studio is as is. I, I haven't specially got it ready for this. I cleaned up a little bit, but I, I purposely didn't clean the palette. I, I left the brushes as I worked yesterday. I think, you know, having it all displayed beautifully is a waste of time. Okay. So I'm, I'm just going to mention, Joe, Joe, I'm just going to mention for Lisa's benefit that uh, when you turn away from the camera, we can't hear him very well. So, okay. so when he's I'll, painting, you'll have to get up close. Okay. Well, look, I'm just about done with showing you around. What we're going to do is put the camera up on the little uh, thing that I've rigged up here. And so it will be on the, on the okay. image that I'm going to be painting. So if you want to have a minute or so, or I'm not sure, you're going to take some time out or we'll just do it. Okay. I'll do that. I'll just go ahead and set up and I'll be, I'll, I'll take that time now. Okay. All right, so uh, our guest is Joseph Zabukvich, and he is in uh, Melbourne, Australia. And uh, I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plein Air Magazine. Uh, I found some photos that I'll, I'll uh, show Joe in a minute once he's set up. But uh, I want to mention that Joe is going to be part of Watercolor Live, which is our virtual online conference. It's uh, going to be the largest watercolor conference in the world. Uh, we just came off of the largest realism conference in the world. 
And um, so you'll want to be a part of this. It is mind boggling. It will just blow you away. There's so much good talent and you're going to be able to sit at home and be comfortable and relaxed and be able to get uh, four full days of unbelievable content. If you go to watercolorlive.com, uh, Joe Zabukvich is headlining, but of course there are many, many other great artists who are going to be part of it. And so you want to be a part of it too. And uh, so I'm going to go back now. It looks like he's ready. Are you ready? Yep. Yeah, I'm okay. set up. So, okay. Hey, I wanted to show you something real quick, Joe, uh, because I I went through some photos. I don't know if you, if you can see see on uh, Lisa's phone or not. Lisa, can you oh, see this? Ah, yeah. oh, yes. I remember that. Yeah. Oh, yes. so, so you, Dan Marshall, and I went plein air painting together at the plein air convention. That was pretty much fun. Yeah, and, well, except for the lady who told me to move because uh, I was blocking the tree she was painting. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like if she knew who you were, she, well, she probably did. She didn't care. And then uh, I found another one in the exhibit hall with Mark D'Alessio and his wife. I don't remember her uh, name. Yes, lovely people. Lovely yes. people. Yeah, I, and, I, I had a ball. I had a I've, ball in San Francisco. I've lost, really? uh, I think, 30, 35 pounds since that was taken. So I'm. Hopefully, I'm uh, going to keep it off. Okay, now we'll get back to you and your um, and your panel here. All right. <clears throat> well, uh, what I decided to do is show you versatility of watercolor, what it can do, how easy it is to do if you do it properly. The biggest problem students have with watercolor is not brushes and paints, what colors to mix and paper and all that sort of thing. It's the way they relate to it. And that is that they look at the image and try to emulate it on the page. And they make the image, the actual source, more important than the painting. So they don't pay attention to what watercolor is doing. Watercolor will tell you what to do if you dance with it, if you kind of do like a tango going back and forth and watch what it's doing. <clears throat> Sorry about my voice. Um, it will do it for you. So what I'm going to do is try and avoid putting my head in the camera and I'll just, no drawing, no anything. And we're going to start with a, just a, a little, I'll wet this a bit, just randomly. And we're going to paint a little snowscape. It'll take two seconds. All right. Very quick. So the wetness, of course, has given me a soft edge there. And you have to kind of imagine there's a sky there and so forth. So here is our uh, low-lying hill. And if I mix up some thicker water, sorry, I'm not talking colors and things, but it's pretty obvious, just a bit yeah. of ultra there. Um, <clears throat> if we go a bit darker at the bottom, it instantly gives us this lovely edge. Now, this is what I mean about relating to uh, what's happening there. If you look at it, you, I can spot a little line here and I can increase that a bit and go down a bit and I can get a little building out of this uh, more or less instantaneously. Now, here's a square building and if I put in a few trees and things and a road leading out, you have to use your imagination a little bit there and I'll mix sure. up some thicker pigment for some trees and things, just a bit stronger around this building. And that, we've got a nice soft edge here, soft edge there, sharp edges here. This is all visual language and it creates this, I think it's quite nice, this little uh, uh, landscape, some bits. And I'll tell you what, to make it a little bit more realistic, I'll put in, so we can have a little village here. I'll it's amazing how rapidly you made that village by with one or two brush strokes. Exactly, but I don't have any reference, you see. This is what happens. People look at the reference and then they get obsessed with that and they say, oh, there's a building here and there's a building there and they, they kind of waste all this energy trying to emulate that rather than watching what's actually happening on your paper. That will give you all the answers. So I think I'll get a smaller brush <clears throat> and to make it really realistic, this is our little road here. Let's put in a, a, a little man here with a little bit of color. Uh, he's in red to stand out. Uh, we'll give him a little head. It's quite small. 
there and he's going hunting i guess something like that like a darker pants and let's give him uh, the usual little dog there with a little tail so there he is in the snow going hunting okay yep you got that yep got All it right. so there he is going hunting in the snow everything is happening so what i'll do now is travel to venice I know it oh. sounds a bit strange. But this, is our surprise. this is our surprise? Well, of sorts, yes. So we just go up here with the little um, church tower. I'll get a smaller brush. It's too big. A Skoda brushes have incredible points. You can draw an ant with it. So this is the beginning of our church tower. So it's not a big church tower in a village there. It's actually in Venice, as you will see in a minute. So now I will do this. How are we doing for time? Uh, you have about 11 minutes. I can do it. No pressure. Right. There. So this is... The lagoon in Venice with the little church across there, St. Giorgio. A few seagulls. But we can't have a village in the snow there. So this needs to be gone. Now, what I forgot to uh, mention is that you can only do this while the painting is wet. Of course, if whatever I'd done before had dried, I couldn't do this. Now, a lot of students don't paint in watercolour time. They paint in their own time, chasing that image. And in the meantime, the watercolour is drying and you end up with a dead looking thing that cannot be moved, cannot be corrected, whatever. So here we are from the snow scene, we have ended up in Venice. All right. But you can't have a guy with a dog going hunting on the lagoon in Venice, can you? No, he needs to be in a gondola. <laughs> exactly. So what we'll do is this. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> Now, I'm not doing this to impress people or anything like that. It is really just showing how important it is. Here's Lisa and I sitting in a gondola. It's expensive, you know. It's, it's about $80 for half an hour. And yeah. The guy constantly talks and drives you insane with this silly talking. So a little bit of a reflection just to make it look a little bit more real. And I think we can have some other boats and things there. You're still with me? I'm with you. Here's, yeah, here's a little uh, boat here. And a Vaporetto and some other bits here. So we've gone a long way from our little... Um, uh, snow scene. Snow scene, haven't we? Yes, I mean, we it's have. Got, it's gone, but it's in there. You know, the snow, there's a little bit of that thing left there as I keep pointing out if you just look at this and what I'll do is I'll spray it a little bit to keep it wet because I'm going to change this again so sometimes people get upset because they say oh that's so nice don't, don't spoil it but oh that's another thing don't get precious about your work when you paint I think you can get too oh gee I love this and so on always stay calm always say what what's offering what what can i do with it where can i go whatever and you can see that what spraying is done it's actually making the pigment move again and it's become alive again there's a bit of smoke coming up here from this vaporetto and so on i'll just straighten that up a bit and that's it um venice is done so yeah. we will go to new york let's say or, oh, or, or <laughs> melbourne or melbourne all right so I'll need to get a bigger brush. And now actually I'll start with a smaller one. 
I'll start with distance first. So a bit of pale blue here, and sorry, uh, here you've got, I'll keep this church tower. You do have some old buildings in the city. So the other thing is, I'm just looking at my brush strokes here, and I want to point out how important it is to try and do the shape in as, as least amount of brush strokes you can manage. This business of dabbing at things forever, it, it just doesn't work. Now I'll get a bigger brush and some stronger pigment. And we will, um, sorry, that's all gone. <laughs> it's, it's a bit, uh, I know it's a sacrilege a bit, but there you are, for the sake of art. I just thought it would be, oops, I wasn't supposed to go there. Where's my tissue? That's gone too far. Get rid of that. By the way, I'm using Bohung paper, which is a new introduction onto the scene. It is available. What's, what's Don't it ask me. Bohong. It's uh, made in China, and it's in direct competition with all the other papers. It is much cheaper than... Uh, everything else that we are so used to buying. And I'll just spray this because it's gone a bit dry. It's very tough. It's very strong. It, it's quite a remarkable uh, surface. Not that easy to use, but when you master it, it is quite fantastic. And we better put in the other side. So there we are. And of course, we've still got our gondolier here. I know that there is a gondola on in Central Park on the on the park, but I don't think we can keep him really. Now I really need to dig into some pigment and get a little bit stronger. All right. And this is again a lesson in tone. As soon as you put these darks in at the base here, it makes that go back. Yeah, you've got about eight minutes, by the way. Oh, plenty of time. Yeah. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. And add another city. <laughs> well, yes, uh, if I had uh, a piece of paper that was big enough, I could go back to the snow scene and back to Venice and so on until I ended up with a painting, you know, 40 meters long. Um, I think we can make this into a car here. And... I'll keep some of this white, and again, some cars here, and of course, we've got a gondola in the middle of a street, so he's going to have to go. Sorry about uh, that. But I farewell. Keep, well, I'm, I'm hoping to keep the man, so... Well, we'll it could be a gondola that. in Central Park, you know. Yes, I know. There is one there. It looks a bit strange. <laughs> and it's, they're cheating. It's actually got an uh, electric motor in it. And the guy yeah. goes about uh, pretending to be rowing. So, again, a bit of strength for these cars and things. Um, put another one in there. I'll keep some of these highlights and things. And the gondolier can go. We can just give him a... I'm determined to keep him just to sort of make a joke of it. Watch your head. Yep. Okay. Got you. Uh, oh, here's an umbrella. There. And we come down with this, and it becomes a street. And I think we can start introducing some color and a bit more strength still for whatever some trees, there's a park here, and make that umbrella round there. I can go back to this now a bit and bring this forward a little bit so it comes in front of that. So this is starting to go back and I can even spray it a bit more and lose some of that even more. And a bit more strength here. How much have I got? I'm so going to take up watercolor now. It's just totally blowing <laughs> me away. 
You got Look, five minutes. When when you use it properly, it's actually not that difficult. It's this business of trying to force it to do what you want it to do, and it won't do it. It'll only do what it wants to do. So what you do is you dance with it, and you say, it's now time to put in some darks, some darker figures here, people walking, whatever. And I'll throw in a yellow cab, seeing that we are in uh, New York. Just a bit of color there. And it's probably a bit too wet for what I want to do, but I'll try and put in some traffic lights and things here. I'm using some of my famous gray for Daniel Smith. And I think if I go up here and put in a traffic light, see just that alone, it pops. So it pushes that back. And I'm afraid our little man is just too gone. We're going to have to get Okay, your head's that. blocking again. Yep. I know it's hard Sorry to paint that. sideways. Yes, yes. Well, I, for smaller details, you tend to, uh, what's the word, go in a bit closer, and that's where yeah. the head is. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm wow. nearly done. I'll just do the last bit, which is this, you know, uh, the wet uh, street scene needs reflections, doesn't of it? Of course. Oh, fabulous. So that will paint itself. And if I spray the bottom part of it, that will soften the edges a little bit. Outstanding. Um, smaller brush. And just go down a little bit of finesse here and there. Water on a brush. And we can cut through there, give it some directional lines. I think soften some of this distance. So it disappears back there. Well, I'm pretty impressed. It takes a lot to impress me, but you've blown me away, Joseph. All right. Uh, one last thing. I know that we've got to go. I will just put in some uh, uh, street lamps, furniture. The architects call this... Uh, Entourage, believe it or not. Entourage. Entourage, that's what the architects say. Uh, as soon as we put in uh, some of this sort of finer detail, oh, yeah. it again pushes everything back. It doesn't have to be super accurate. And has some more traffic lights in the distance. And maybe the last bit, uh, a few... Um, traffic lights and so forth, a bit of color, if I can get it out. It's a little bit too wet yet. I've ran out of time. Yeah, well, we get the idea, though. Yep, yep, yep. And maybe a, a, a couple of... Oh, yeah, well, that makes it, doesn't it? Yeah, well, that finishes. Now, it's a trap for students. They think if they do this, the painting will work. The painting only works if the shapes, big shapes, relate correctly. Yeah. It doesn't work because you've put in uh, some uh, tail lights and reflections. Um, the, how painting is made to work is by relating the major shapes correctly. I can't stress that enough. If there's a lesson I can give you, that's the one. So there we are. I think I'm done. I've run out of time anyhow. So well, thank we you have had... I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, we need to get uh, Lisa to put you back on camera with me. All right. Uh, we'll just take it off here. Here we go. Okay. All done. Outstanding. All right. That was fabulous. Outstanding. Thank you. So we're so excited about having you on Watercolor Live. I know it's a big secret what you're going to be doing, but uh, I think everybody's going to be blown away by that too. Well, I won't do this. I'll, I'll do proper demonstrations and so yeah, forth. Yeah, of course. But uh, yeah, well, you're gonna have you're gonna have like ninety minutes or an hour or an hour and a half or something like that. So I guess that's the same yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Joseph, thank you for sharing your space. Lisa, thank you for being our camera operator today, and uh, stay safe. And we'll we'll get over there and hang out together as soon as this is all over with. The first beer is on me.
All right. All right. Second on me. All right. Take care. <laughs> so our guest today, Joseph Zabukvich, who is known as the finest watercolor artist in the world, and he's going to be part of Watercolor Live, which is the virtual art conference that we're doing in January, and it is coming up the 28th through 30th. We're waiting till Christmas and all that nonsense is over. Beginner's Day uh, for brand new beginners is on the 27th, and then the 28th through 30th. So four total days, you can get the beginner's day separately, or you can add it to your package and uh, got some incredible artists and uh, go to watercolor live and check it out and, and see, by the way, the price is going to go up on November 30th. You want to get in there and get that ticket as soon as you possibly can. You don't want to miss it. Um, wow. I want to remind everybody that you can subscribe on YouTube at uh, just go to streamline art video to find our dailies, uh, the 12 noon daily like this one. And also our uh, 12 noon, we're going to have uh, art instruction videos every day at noon. Let's see. Today we have uh, Gene Chambers, I believe, is going to be doing one. Yes, it's called uh, In a Timely Manner. And that's Gene Chambers today at three o'clock. It's a classic little adult. It's been around for a while, but it's it's uh, fabulous. And uh, it's called In the Studio with Gene Chambers. So you don't want to miss that. That's today at three o'clock. Also, I uh, want to remind you guys I'm on live daily at noon. Just look it up, Facebook or YouTube, and it's at Streamline Art Video. That's where you find it. Um, and so that's pretty much all I've got today. I want to remind you guys about Watercolor Live. Don't forget that. It's going to be absolutely a great time. So thank you for watching today. Oh, I do have one other thing I forgot to mention. I just want to mention it again. There's so many watercolorists watching. We have a, a free newsletter every week called American Watercolor. It's edited by Kelly Kane, former editor of Watercolor Magazine. She is also the editor of Plein Air Magazine now. And you want to get American Watercolor because we're doing all kinds of stories on watercolor and artists and trends and things like that. You subscribe free, AmericanWatercolor.net, not .com, .net, AmericanWatercolor.net, .com, or dot, dot net and slash subscribe americanwatercolor.net subscribe okay that's all i got today thank you to joseph zabukvich and to lisa for uh inspiring us i'm gonna i'm gonna have to go get some of that paper and get some watercolors and get started and get cranking on this uh, i got a lot of catching up to do uh joseph zabukvich thank you so much and thank you everyone for watching remember the goal of this daily is to keep your head in the game to keep you from getting uh just completely consumed by the news media, by the COVID, by the elections in America, by everything that's going on. What you want to do is do something fun for yourself. Make sure that you're taking care of yourself and inspiring yourself because we as creators, we're artists. Our responsibility is to be the creators. Everybody else needs us more than ever. They need what we bring into their lives. And if we allow ourselves to be consumed by all this negativity, then we're not going to be able to do that for them. So stay positive. Stop doom scrolling. Stop spending all your time on social media looking at all the election stuff and the COVID stuff and everything else. Just try to preserve and protect yourself. Shield yourself. That's what I wrote about in this week's Sunday Coffee, which you can find at coffeewitheric.com. Thank you for watching. Have a terrific day. I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plen Air Magazine. Keep your head in the game.